everybody, it's Sam at Mix.Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I have a very large gift bag tutorial to show you today. It's so big I'm struggling to actually get it all in frame. But this measures 12 by 4 by 12. So it's a really nice size. I have made this size before but I haven't made this kind of, I guess, design. So on the side there, can you see it just drops down slightly. So this is different and the big pocket on the front is different. The flaps Again, I've done that kind of style and I will link up here all of the flat, fold flat bags because the other larger 12 by 12 ones, you can kind of take bits from that bag. You might want to add it into this one so you can really kind of, yeah, make it your own but um, follow this kind of process and I love it. And it folds flat. Love a fold flat. So you can see there, so it's easy to store away. This one is actually going to be, I've just decided I'm going to give this one to my friend. So yeah, really nice long handles. You don't have to have them that long but I wanted it to look like an actual handbag. This goes over my arm, it's that big. So um, that's what I like to do. And then here you've got Velcro closure and a nice little concertina pocket on the front. So you could put your card in there. You can obviously decorate this however you want. But the, the papers I'm using are by the Paper Tree. It's absolutely gorgeous. It was part of my craft stash kind of haul that I had. And um, yeah, I'm so pleased that I got to choose that one. And I would, like I said, show you that in more detail. But I think the thing that really works with this is just the little kind of pops of the mirrored card stock so that's kind of like the metal if that makes sense so you've got them here at the bottom of all of the handles you've got them around the tassels I've done it with the doily and then I've done it with all of the circles here and also on the back there as well and I just think it really ties it together I love this kind of denim card stock which is the dovecraft card stock and I just think it yeah it just all ties in really nicely so let me show you how to make this very large gift bag Okay, so this is the gorgeous paper pad. I absolutely love this. I'm so pleased that I chose this one because like I said, it's just such a different palette of colors that I have. So it's nice to have something quite different and very, I just think quite soft and very feminine. It's just beautiful. So I'll just give you a quick flick through. You can see just the kind of thing that you will get. I love the stripe with the flowers there. That one I'm using. Again, the stripes is the main background for this bag. I'm using that one for the sides. And you can add peach, obviously the blue, like denim kind of color, which is what I'm using with my cardstock. And then it just rotates again back through the same. So yeah, really nice. And that one is the Touch of Romance. And on the back, you've got Touch of Romance paper kit. You've got decorative papers that you can also get to go with it. That's the pad which I have. And then down here you have sentiment toppers. So there are three of these pieces. Then you've also got more, another paper pad, which is like your basic backgrounds to go with it. And then you have these as well, and they will all complement that. So they give you, it's nice that they give you that overview of other things that you can add to this. So yeah, it's really good. Okay, so you want two pieces that are by 12. However, my base, I needed, I want a strong cardstock. I want to put something heavy in the gift bag and I want this strong cardstock. So this is 300 GSM, however, it's only an A4 length. So the length of mine is 11 and three quarters. So I've actually cut my card here, which was 12 by 12. I've cut it to 12 by 11 and three quarters. However, if you have a strong cardstock and you have a 12 inch length, then you want two pieces of 12 by 12. And then for your base, you want a piece of 12 by six. If you're like me and you've only got A4 in your strong card, then you want, like I said, two pieces of 12 by 11 and three quarters. And then for your base, it will be 11 and three quarters by six, okay? With your two pieces of 12 by 12 or 12 by 11 and three quarters on one of them, which will be the back, so this is it upright. I'm gonna pop it now on its side and you just wanna score it two inches, okay? And then just burnish that one in half. Well, not in half, but just burnish and fold that one. And that's all you need for those. And then with that base piece, doesn't matter what your length is, it'll be along the six inch side. You want to score at one and at five. Okay, and then just fold and burnish like so. Then for your handles, you want two pieces that are one by 12. We're going to stick them together and it will give us this by the time we stick these bits on. These pieces here, you want four pieces that are one by two. Anything you want really, it doesn't have to be mirrored cardstock, but I'm using that because that's kind of my accent throughout the bag. Then you want two pieces for your sides that are six by nine. And along the nine inch side, you want to score at one inch. 
and then along the six inch side you want to score at one and at five okay and then fold and burnish all of those sides like so pop it back in so it's along the nine inch side but with both these flaps up and you're going to score within this section so you want to score it three inches just within that section okay then rotate it again still with these pieces facing up so it should come up to the four inch marker and you're going to score it two just down to that score line that you just scored okay do that on both pieces and we'll score the triangle sections in a minute and then for the pocket on the front which is completely optional for the closure you want one piece of three and a half by eight and along the three and a half inch side you want to score at one inch okay and again just fold and burnish I've already gone and just rounded off the corners there with my corner punch and then for the actual pocket I just was checking that it was going to work so I've already done my folds but you want to you want a piece that's nine and a half by six and along the nine and a half side you want to score at a quarter of an inch half an inch and three quarters of an inch and then you want to score at eight and three quarters nine and nine and a quarter and then rotate it along the six inch side you're going to score at one inch so that's the and then I think I said you want four pieces of one by two and that's to decorate the handles and then you want these pieces here which are just purely decorative and I use my half inch circle punch which is an old hobby craft punch oh I almost dropped it okay so that's all of the supplies needed so now we can start getting stuff cut so you want your two side pieces okay so I've already done this one so along the short side where you've got that one inch score line because you'll have your one inch and your two sides okay along the bottom I'm going to remove both of those squares in the corner keep it nice and straight we're not going to be actually taking any wedges off of the side pieces because they're all going to be on show but you can take just a little wedge off of the bottom one so if you just want to just cut in just on an angle ever so slightly like that I don't think I've done that one so I'll just take a little bit off it just stops anything hanging over the sides okay and then we just need to do a couple of score lines in the middle so if I flip it over it's easy for you to see I've already done my score lines but I've folded that one I haven't folded this one so I'll do it on here so you just want to with a metal ruler where we scored at two inches when it was up like this we scored at two down to that score line there from that there you're going to score from the bottom of that one down to that corner and then from that one down to that corner and that's going to allow us to be able to fold our bag flat okay now usually these tabs would go inside and I would say fold and burnish everything but because these are going to be displayed and I don't want you to cause I don't want you to create a crease here if you just carefully just fold that one up to that line and you can fold the triangular pieces okay like so but do not fold that line going across just leave it until the bag's actually all constructed because it's just going to cause like I said creases along here which you don't want okay so that's our sides then if you grab your base which you should have already scored obviously and folded and burnished and all that lot and we can get these bits stuck down because it's easier to do this now so we're going to stick these inside the ends so this is four inches and this four inch tab is going to stick in there now you might want to put it underneath so you have a you know a neat inside but then you have that underneath and you might want to cover the underneath and strengthen it even more you might want to put some grey board under there it's entirely up to you whether you put this on the top or the bottom I'm going to put mine inside if I feel I need to decorate it later I can do but I'm not too worried because by the time I put presents in there and I usually put tissue paper and things like that and as I always say <laughs> does, does anybody ever look inside a gift bag because I know I don't so I've just added my glue and you just want to make sure that your score line runs perfect with the end and if you kind of bring it up and you can wiggle it around a little bit make sure everything's nice and straight and I'm happy with that okay and then do the same with this end here okay I'm really pleased with that next you're gonna stick it's up to you whether you want to do the front or the back I'm going to start with the back piece so you're going to now run glue all along this piece here and stick that over the top okay 
Again, just make sure that you get that lined up perfectly. Like so, so now if I lift that up, make sure that's all secure there. Okay, and then do the same with the front. Okay, so that you should now have something that's like that. All right, and next we're going to now bring up all of our sides, but this time you're going to stick them outside. But again, you don't have to. By all means, if you don't want to have that showing, then just stick it inside like so. But I do, I don't know, just like to do things different. I like that, and I like the silver circles that I'm going to put on it. So again, this is getting too big now for my camera of. Um, kind of view so I'm just going to again add glue to the either in or outside it's entirely up to you and just keep this one held up nice and straight and just work in the side into that score line once it's kind of tacked in place you can just lie it down on the front and then go in so I'm just going to go and do that now on all four corners Okay, so once that's all done, you should then be able to, if you go down to where that fold is on the back and start to just make sure all the triangles kind of push inwards and it should just automatically find its place and fold nice and flat. Okay, and that way now you can kind of focus on this front piece and get your pocket stuck down. So I'm just going to put that to one side. So with the pocket, with your side ones here, with your, you'll have three score lines. You've got the quarter of an inch, half an inch and the three quarters of an inch. The most inner ones, the three quarters of an inch, you want to fold down. Then the next one you want to fold up so you're creating a valley and then the last one you want to fold down and that will give you this little concertina fold. So again, most inner one you're going to fold down first, then a valley and then that fold mountain. Okay and before you do that you need to cut the bottom which I forgot to do. <laughs> so you want to fold up the bottom one just bow and burnish that one and then you'll have the square kind of a square down here with the three like rectangles in it you just want to remove those completely like so and again okay so that is now what I might do is just take a little bit off just take some of that little kind of bulk off because you're going to fold this inside but you've also got that concertina piece. So that's going to fold in. We're going to add glue to that side and stick that down. And then we're going to add glue to the outer mountain part of that fold there. And it's all going to fold in like so. So you've got a nice pocket space there. Okay, so if I bring in the front of the gift bag... It's up to you really where you want to put it. I'm going to probably go for around there. So it's probably about an inch and a half up from the bottom. And you just want to make sure that you've got equal, you know, gap here. So, I mean, I've got the stripes so I can kind of use them as, but then that is going to stick like so. So I'm going to add glue all along that bottom section. And you don't need to go too mad. I'm only going to put like a, a little card in here really. And then you want to put glue onto that one there. Okay, and then very carefully, you want to stick the whole thing down. And because I've got my wet glue, I've got time to wiggle and get it all in place. Okay, if you want to use red tape there, double sided tape, instead, it's entirely up to you. So I'm just going to burnish that all down there, like so. And then you want to bring in your lid. So you would have folded that over and that should sit just inside the concertina fold. So the very back piece there, you can see where it's sitting. It should sit in there perfectly and when you bring it down, you'll see there. Okay, so again I'm just going to add some glue onto the back of this. And then again, just bring this up very carefully. Okay, and then what I forgot to do is I wanted to have that folded in just so I had that curve because that's going to go there. But what I'll do is I'll just snip that now because I'd already folded it over. So ideally, I mean, it's entirely up to you how you decorate this, but I was just going to fold this piece right over. I think I'm going to cut this using my trimmer 
just so I can get a really nice clean cut. Yeah, it's still going to look nice. And then I will just take that bit off there and I'm going to stick that right in the centre there. I just think that really finishes it off nicely. I'm going to just add glue to the middle bit. So again, I've got a little bit of glue that's smudged there, but I'm going to leave that now. I'm not going to touch it until it's completely dry. Okay, so that's that all done. So next you want your handles. This is this adding this blue and all the tassels is kind of what brings it all together. And before I forget, that's the die. Yeah, X cut vintage doily die. You could probably still get it, so I'll look out for links for you. Okay, so with these two pieces for one of the handles, so this would be my one for the back, I'm just going to cover glue about one inch area there and then just stick the other one over the top. Okay, and then I'm just going to use my bone folder and just, just curl the other two and just kind of mould that bit there as well. So it's a bit curved rather than square, like so. And then I've got these pieces oh, here. And again, I think I covered, oh no, half an inch. That was it. So on the ends of each of these, I'm just going to use my scoreboard. And you just want to lightly, not a heavily score, but just lightly just do a half inch score line on the ends of each one. Like so. And this is just really a guide. And then I'm just going to cut a little wedge up to the score line, just off of each side. So you're just creating that shape. It just again stops you getting anything kind of overhanging. And then just add some glue and then just stick that one over the top. Okay, and then do the same on the other side. Okay, so I've just done that, but now this is dry. I'm just going to go over and just buff off any glue, like so. Oh, a little bit there. It will come straight off. And then I've got some on here. It just brings it up really nice. Okay, so you should have two of those. And then you want to get those stuck down. So again, it's entirely up to you. But if you hold it like this with your thumbs on top and then bring it around, keeping your thumbs on top, you'll have that shape. And that's how I like to stick mine down. And it's entirely up to you how close in you might want them like that. I'm probably going to have mine maybe just coming in slightly from there. I'm going to follow this line here. And then on this side, I'm probably going to follow that line there that looks about yeah I think that's about right I might come in maybe one more it's it's around two and a half inches from each side I guess I do need to be spot on but I was going to try and line mine up with the lines mind you if I do two and a half then that's there right, I'm going to do two and a half and I'm going to stick this one down first so you just want to add glue all in that two inch by one inch area so that whole silver tab in my case like so and then I'm just going to sit that down on top. So it's quite good using this stripy paper because I can line everything up straight. So you've got some glue seeped off there. Okay, so that's that one. And then so let's just double check I have got that right. Yeah, two and a half. Two and a half. So I'm looking there. Okay, so if I bring that round there, you can see it's so big how that looks. I think it looks really nice once the tassels and everything are hanging. And uh, yeah, no, I really like how this is coming together. So now just flip it over and you just want to stick them down. The easy bit now is you can just line them up with the handles underneath. Okay, so that's my handles done. I really like them. It looks like such a cool shopper bag. And then it's just down to finishing off now. So I'm going to add um, a Velcro dot onto here. These are just the 20 mil, I think. It's from the Dot and Dab collection um, by Trimcraft. So I'm just popping a pair together there. And then I'm just going to stick that right in the middle there. And then flip that one over. You don't have to. It does sit quite nicely on its own. But again, I just think it finishes it all off nicely. And then I've got my tassels and I've got my gift tag. So the tassels, I will link up here a tutorial on how to make them. They're very, very easy. But I do recommend that you get some vegetable cutting scissors because they make life much quicker. You can also use the dies. I know lots of companies have made tassel dies. 
So I have one there, so I'm just going to, you can see how I've looped that through and I just finished it off with some mirrored cardstock and I just bent them out slightly just to kind of, yeah. I do have actual tassels but I do like making paper ones, I just think they look cool. And then I'm just going to feed that one through and then this one is a little bit shorter so they kind of cascade down like so. And then I've got my gift tag which I think I'm going to have all on the other side as well. And this one is from this set here. But these were both given to me. They were either given to me or brought, one, brought them from a, like a D-Stash Facebook group. So I don't know where they are from. So if anybody knows, let me know. But yeah, I've got those. So I'm going to just tie this one around here with a nice little bow. So and then I can just trim off some of that excess there. So I just put some of the pattern paper inside and then I've just put a white piece of cardstock on the back so I can obviously write my little message. And then I'm going to stick all these down. So again, this is completely optional, but I think because it's such a big bag, it just ties it all together quite nicely. So I don't know how many I'm going to use yet. I've got the front and the back to do. So I'm just going to kind of lay them out first. Okay, so I'm going to have five on each side. So you're going to need 20, but like I said, I used that punch so it was just done in seconds. So I'm going to stick them all down. Okay, and there is the finished gift bag. It's huge. I don't even know how I'm going to take a photo of this, but I love how it's come together. So if I bring that up, you can see there. Love the little tassels and everything. Love all of the circles there. I'm trying to get it all in so you can see the front. There we go. Love it. I love that it's kind of dropped down there on the side just to give it a little bit more interest. Like I always say, I try to make every gift bag different in some way. So I will link in all of my fold flat gift bags because I have done other ones with the whole kind of 12 by 12 front and you might want to mix and match and add things from that bag to this bag. You know, there's so many different ways to change it, but I'm so pleased with this. And I just love a fold flat bag because we can make and make and make. And as I always say, they don't take up a lot of room, but these do get used a lot. I go through a lot of my bags. So yeah, I'm really pleased with that guys. So I hope you like it. I hope you give it a go. You know, there's no no dies needed really for this. No, well there isn't. You don't need that tag die. That's the only die I've actually used because, and the doily, but again, you don't need to have that. You could put another nice piece of decorative paper over that. You don't need to have that die there. Everything else, yeah, even the circles, you could use your whole punch. They're, they are a bit bigger, but yeah. I always say, get your basic punches because they're so handy. But yeah, that's it. I'm not going to talk anymore because I'm done. So I <laughs> hope you enjoy it. If you have, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.